Greetings everyone, this is BJ Black from No Export For You and welcome to part 12 of my Let's Play of Mon Moose Quest Paradox RPG Confrontation Chapter. We've just resolved the situation in Castle Grand Gold and several days have passed. So, the war is over and now at this banquet we get to celebrate the peace. It's just a meager feast and she regrets that she has nothing more for us but due to the war everybody in her country is kind of deprived. This is meager? This could give a festival for to our village for a hundred years. Oh, there's so much to eat. So, regarding what happened, we've even got King Grangold here at the feast with us. Oh, he's got something to say, doesn't he? Well, to think that he would appear at the feast, even though he was a bit conflicted on coming, after all, just a few days earlier, he was crossing swords with us. Under orders from him, the soldiers of his country fought in here, in this country, killing soldiers and civilians alike. And King Grangold himself also killed a number. But the reason he is participating in the feast it's to show that we are walking the same path together from now on. He vows it. And also to prove his earnestness in wishing to conclude peace. Let's believe that this is something we can put to rest soon. That is all. As far as Queen Grand Noah has to say, this recent war was due to the plot of the Mao. So, Gra King Grand Gold, as well as the Queen of Sabasa, were spiritually manipulated. Furthermore, even Grand Noah was infiltrated by the agents of the Mao. Ah, and they've even come to this feast. Jeez, she is so shameless. Outright brazen, really. And so this great war, in this great war, everybody is truly a victim. The one we should, the one we should bear a grudge towards is the Mao. King Grand Gold actually bore no responsibility for his actions. So let's hold this in our hearts and hope that we can move forward together. And so, this speech has gotten rather long, so at the end, we would like to ask the hero Luca, the savior who brought an end to the war, to say a few words. Oh, me? Well, we can thank everybody, or we can mourn the people who were sacrificed or the world is mine. Look, are you getting enough oxygen? Well, in this regrettable battle, it's taken a heavy toll on Luca's spirit, clearly. So let's enjoy this banquet and put his heart at rest. So thank you for everybody for all that you have done. 
And let's eat. Okay, this is like one of the camping trips, only the map is twice as big. This could take a while. Oh no, I don't talk to guys. So, King Grongold was also manipulated like Sara was. But it seems he's even harder on himself. Feels the weight of responsibility more. Thanks to what the Lilith sisters and the Maul did. Oh. What they did was really unforgivable. And furthermore, Sarah has to think about payback for her father. Well, if she lets her go self get too tense, it'll just give her cramps in her shoulders. So, we've got this banquet here. We'd better enjoy it. About the guys I do want to mention, apparently the Pope, the Mecca Pope, just drinks gasoline or some shit. And our former human, King Grongold, I don't even know what that is. Pur purple bubbly crap. Maybe his uh, digestive tract is, has special needs now. Anyway. Queen Ant has to say that since she's the queen of the ants, she's taken a lot of responsibility for trying to rebuild. And especially since her troops were, her daughters were part of the soldiers, she needs to kind of work off a debt towards society. And anyway, Grongold, King Grongold was manipulated in this. And he's trying to work off his debt as well. So hopefully that can work everything out. So it's all thanks to you. Your actions have freed her and everybody really. But right now she's kind of busy wrapping up food. But soon she'd like to pr thank us properly. Oh, the food she's wrapping up? She's going to take it home and have her daughters eat some of it. Isn't she sweet? This is some Grongold minister. Hmm. She, he says that we've got a lot of variety amongst our allies. I shouldn't have talked to him, but these guys are kind of hilarious. This is a Sabatha minister. He says that the marriage partner of a hero is kind of in legends supposed to be royalty and come to think of it here in our native Savasa we have a queen of just the right age across from him there's a grand gold minister says what are you saying in grand gold in Grand Noah, we also have a queen of marriageable age. Oh well, but when you consider her age, it might not be proper to, for her to be attempting to go after this hero. Grand Noah, Queen Grand Noah, way over there, says, Off with his head! Well, her ears are like hellish. Here's Razaro. So, good job, Luca. Next time, don't get involved, get involved in this kind of crap. Huh. Razaro, is it really okay for you to be wandering around with those injuries? Hey, I'm not gonna die from this. And furthermore, healing injuries takes a lot of calories. So, let me eat. Hmm. Also, with regards to you being the dawn of the underworld, I've decided not to worry about it, but Sonia's pretty fucking angry. Hmm, I'm gonna apologize while I'm still injured. Against someone who's bearing injuries, she's not going to be too rough. Oh, you're pretty underhanded, Rosaro. 
Sonia was also pretty mad at you, Marvin. So, well, it would be a good plan to still... to apologize while I'm still injured. Dad. <laughs> yeah, these guys. So, good fighting in there, Luca. Marlin was impressed. Say, Marlin, are your injuries okay? Hmm, truly, I thought I would die. If not for Tom and Paul, I wouldn't have survived, certainly. Tom and I was thinking to herself, all of the guys in that room look like villains and I didn't know which ones to kill. But she's not going to say anything. Hey, look here, Luca. Just because the situation might be bad, you can't simply go throwing your life away. That's a third-rate way to do things. You gotta resist the temptation to sacrifice yourself. Even if you have to bite stones, you gotta survive. If you're a man, you need to figure out how to return alive. That biting stones thing is another Japanese saying. One site translates it as, come hell or high water. So, yeah. Survive. Yeah, Marlin and Rosaro really gave their best in order to survive to give them that advice. Puru go. Puru puru puru. Feast feast. <laughs> oh. Hey, would you bring some Tupperware? I'm going to take some of this with me. And those fruits, I'm going to take as many as I can carry. Oh, I'm not going to be paying you for this, by the way. Rami isn't here, but apparently she overhears. And she thinks to herself, I don't want to become like that. Hmm, that's odd. I felt like I felt a strange gaze upon me. Yeah, you're a crappy succubus. Even Rami is looking down on you. Okay, Grand Noah Minister. This may be sudden, but would you happen to like older women? Well, you don't need to answer right now, of course. Just think of it as me talking to myself. Our country's queen happens to be of a marriageable age, after all. And now the guy across the way. The Savasa Minister butts in. Hey, that's unreasonable. Hey, you be quiet. This doesn't concern you. And anyway, back to the Legends thing with heroes marrying into royal families and such. There is that Queen of Savasa, but there's the rumor that she's kind of a vamp, so perhaps she wouldn't be suitable for a hero's wife. Oh, I feel like dancing, she says. Would somebody bring me that man's head on a platter? <laughs> Don't badmouth queens. At least not in the same room. Maybe not in the same country. So, since we're going to be doing a lot of work, we need to eat a lot and, well, it makes us better at working. Maya. I keep forgetting she's in my party. But it's quite tasty food. She'd like to take some home to her husband. In her next term, she'd like someone who can make such a full course. Uh, no, no, it, that's nothing. Is she really thinking about it again? Promising as she eats is still reading the notes as usual. Promising, don't you think that's a little um, bad manners? Ah, excuse me. She's not used to this kind of gathering feast stuff. Even at feasts in the heavens when she was there. She'd just be reading a book by herself as well. And all those raucous fellows have probably all died along with the heavens. He gives her the feeling that maybe there is such a thing as heavenly punishment. 
Was she bullied when she was back with, uh, back home, wherever it is? Uh, anyway. Uh, that being the case, would you leave me alone, please? She's got a gaze which is colder than ice. Whew. That's pretty cold, yeah. So, this is the first time Arthur's had this kind of a rich feast. She kind of wishes she had multiple heads to enjoy it with. Hmm. Is she actually jealous of Caesar? So then, this ends one incident. It's good to have a weight off, taken off of our shoulders like that. So, what are you going to do now, Mephisto? You were ordered to support Gran Noah from, by the Mao, after all. Well, that's what you'll continue to do. Support Gran Noah. Well, is that because the Mao order is it? Or is it because you wish to do it? It is my will to obey the orders of the Mao. Does that answer satisfy you? Ah, uh, fuck no. Huh. What if the Mao does something crazy? Oh god, it's Alice. Chomp chomp, tasty. Well, I bet you enjoyed... I'm, I bet you're glad we tried so hard, aren't you, Alice? Yeah, this is tasty. But, on a basic level, the problem still isn't solved. The Mao, Alice's mother, is still plotting something. Chomp chomp. Well, that's something she's worried about too. Om nom. But all the worrying hasn't come to any fruit. Nom noms. There's so much about the truth that we don't know. Eating sounds. Ultimately, the puzzle is missing pieces. More eating sounds. So, there's no use worrying about it. We just need to gather more information. Eating, eating. For that purpose, we're going on a journey around the world. Crunch. Crunch. Ah, oh, I ate the plate. Yeah, that's Alice for you. You know, you should eat more calmly. In any case, it seems you really were... In any case, it seems the worrying really is fruitless. Yep. There's the Tartarus, and then there's your father. We just need to wander around gathering information. If we continue investigating, we'll probably see what her mother's up to as well. And if her reasons don't convince us, we're going to beat her down. So, there's nothing for us to... Well, there's nothing Alice is worried about. Everything's fine. And this food is delicious all the way down to the plate. Yeah, so everything's fine, is it? Alright, Hero Luca, you really did it. For your work, there are no words to express our gratitude. But, the battle is not over yet. The Mao's plot has been stopped, but she has not been defeated. Our four countries are talking about entering an alliance and standing against the Mao. If the time comes, we're going to be borrowing your services again. But, for now, enjoy the feast. If you don't rest when it's time to rest, it'll have a... It'll go to your heart eventually. Sylph says it's tasty and she's never eaten anything this good before. If she eats too much, she might get so fat that she won't be able to fly. But it'll be alright. Amongst the four elemental spirits, 
Only Salamander is missing out on this feast. Afterwards, I'm going to rub it in her face. Hee hee hee. Aw oh, man, Nadine, that's kind of bitchy. Well, we did it, Luca. We really showed everybody. Yeah, you'd try. You really did. You'd, you really did the hardest work too. But in the end, Nero and Neris and Tamamo all got into it. That battle was really on another dimension, really. There's no way we could have butted in. Yeah, their powers are amazing. I wonder if they're all from another world. Well, we had, there was our Tamamo, but then there was the other Tamamo. So three out of four were. Coming from other worlds and wandering around, there's just people like that all over the place. That's weird. We're out to beat them all back to their own home worlds. Mm, yeah, if they cause trouble around here, it's, well, troublesome. Tamamo in particular could ruin a country pretty easily. So now we get to eat a bunch and build some muscle. And then once our powers have gotten stronger, we get to fight against them. I think you're just going to get fat. You're an, even now you've got a pretty full body. Look at things to himself, but he's not going to spit that out. Huh? Well, even though I didn't say it, it could be, my thoughts conveyed to you. Oh, no way. That kind of closeness to mind. Sonia, are you perhaps a little tired? So, Sonia read Luca's mind, but realizing she read his mind made her feel too close to Luca, and then she got all excited. Is that it? Oh, whatever. Q, Q! Is it tasty? Q, Q! Well, Gulp's thinking about returning home as a hero. She's gonna brag about this to all of, all of her family back at Yamatai. Come to think of it, we went to Yamatai and she didn't really say anything while we were there. Vanilla says, this is such a bright place. To Vanilla, who lives in darkness, she's, she's afraid of this kind of happiness. Isn't she cute? Okay. Hilde says that she loves tasty food. Her consumption functions are at full operation. But why does she have this functionality? In her body, there's so many things she doesn't understand. Yeah, Hilde is a curious contraption, isn't she? Ilias, it's tasty. <laughs> it's tasty, is it? You seem kind of sad as you're eating here. Inside of that cell, you don't know how destitute we were. I was so hungry that I caught a rat, fried it up, and ate it. Oh, it's a miracle that I didn't eat my own feathers and my two companions. That... okay. It was truly a cruel circumstance we were in. It seems she was seriously pretty deprived in there. Uh, is it actually any of any nutritious benefit to eat your own feathers or anything's feathers? <clears throat> Alma, Alma says that in this battle, she didn't really get to do much. Since she was locked up, she missed all the good stuff. Well. Morgan and Asterhold won't be able to fight for a while still. When she was captured, she, you know, got her pound of flesh. So what are you going to do from now on? If you'd like, we would like you as one of our allies. Hmm, can't do that. 
she is going to be following the Lilith sisters. Got to track them down to the ends of the earth and get some payback. So she's going to be flying solo for a while. Oh man, I'd like to have a Shiten no with us. Now, speaking of Shiten no, Tamamo. Well, she was at the Fox Shrine and she was exposing everybody to her bad moods. But she came through and we were in a tight spot, so let's say we're even. But still, that other her from that other world. That was just like she was back in the Holy Wars. And now she's completely cute and fluffy, but she remembers how she was back then. Well, what are you going to do now? If you'd like, we'd like you as one of your ally, one of our allies. Sorry, but for a while I'm going to be chasing down that other me. If we leave her alone, there's no telling what kind of calamity, what kind of disaster she's going to stir up. So, Tamamo is going on a long journey. So, best of luck to both of us. Bark, bark, chomp, chomp, tasty, tasty. Well, they don't have much to contribute to this conversation. Hachelle says she'd like all of the fish pirates to be joining in on this feast. But anyway, she'll be taking some of this tasty stuff home for him. <laughs> ah, Bunny says that she's actually got a cat's tongue, so she needs to cool this stuff down or she can't eat it. Blowing sounds, blowing sounds, blowing sounds. Why don't you just take something that isn't served hot? Wait, are you mermaids eating fish? Is that cannibalism? Geez, everybody should eat more mannerly. While well, she's sitting next to Puppy. Nomp, nomp, chomp, chomp. I'm gonna eat until I'm completely full. Bring me some more. She's sitting in front of like a whole fucking pig. Anyway. This is really tasty. We should have banquets like this at our castle. We'd run out of money in three days. Three days? You mean you could actually hold feasts like this for three whole days? We're rich. Gnome isn't saying anything, but she's eating. Gnome, it's that tasty? She nods a couple times. How nice. No. Oh, so thank you to the hero who's brought us victory. Would you like to hear my personal story in here? Well, this guy apparently had a brother who was on the front lines and he returned home safely, but if the war had been drawn out, who knows what would have happened. So, from the bottom of his thoughts, he'd like to thank you and respect you for what you've done. Yeah, we're the good guys. It's awesome. Praise be to the hero. Hey, could you sign this for me? Yeah, that's everybody, isn't it? Except for those two kings. All right, we can continue the feast, in which case we come back in, or we can go back to our room. Yeah, that must be how we advance the plot. So, I better rest for today. What, are you pulling out already? There's still plenty of food. You should have a little... Well, representatives of the people of the world, and the group of heroes. Excuse me for butting in on your pleasantries. Who's there? Who? 
All of you gathered here, I am the Maul, Alice Fees the 15th. Mother! Well, no, this is a projected image, an illusion. Well, this war between humanity has been quelled, and I extend my words of celebration to you, but I have a more important thing to convey. I here declare war on all of humanity. This is a war of eradication. All of humanity's existence shall not be forgiven any longer. A declaration of war and a war of eradication. Mao, are you out of your mind? No, I am not. You have, in this war you fomented amongst us, already stolen so many lives. Is that sacrifice not enough for you? Indeed, it is not. Until humanity is eradicated, know that the flames of war shall not be quenched. To what purpose do you want to destroy humanity? Are you trying to get all the world in your hands? <laughs> but there is no meaning for you knowing my objective. You just need to know that your end is near. Man, she's playing up the villain card. Okay, about the monsters that are living in human towns all across the world. Are you going to be severing the ties they've made to humanity? Those monsters that side with humanity shall all be regulated. That is all. That's not much of an explanation. All right, stop fucking around, Alice Fees, the 15th. What are you? That is all I've come to convey. All of humanity, enjoy the rest of the, t enjoy the rest of your short lives. Man, she really is playing up the villain card. Okay, so, she appears, declares war, disappears. Mephisto, ready all soldiers for war. Prepare all guards, get everybody out there. Sara says, uh, sorry, but I need to return to my home country. I need to direct my soldiers, etc., etc. King Grangold also needs to return to Groundhold himself. In his country, there's kind of a shortage of troops. Yes, all of us should really return home and prepare for war then. Luca, could we have you stay here in the castle? This castle? If the Mao army should attack, we want you to, to deploy you immediately. Alright, leave it to me. Oh man, what are we going to do? If it's come to this... Ah, oh, mother, what are you thinking? Well, that whole declaration of war really spoiled the victory banquet, didn't it? And so... The four kings returned to their respective countries with teleportation magic. And Luca stayed in Gran Noa Castle. And the next day... Well, the night passed, but none of the countries were attacked. It's kind of mono war theory kind of thing to attack just as soon as you've made the declaration of war. If she's done nothing, what the hell is she thinking? Yeah, what was the meaning of that? Anyway. We did request that Luca and his party stay here in this castle, but if an attack is not forthcoming, we can't exactly keep you here. 
Yes, our objectives include the exploration of Tartaros and Luca's father as well. Furthermore, we can't really even say, even that said, we can't leave this declaration of war thing alone either. Well, the Tartaros in this kingdom, as you know, we is inside of a lake. So, until we have a way of exploring it, you can't go in. According to what we've she's heard from us, this in particular is connected to the end of the world. So, on our part, we're going to do our best to figure out a way to descend you into the Tartaros. Lower you into the Tartaros. Yeah, that'll be a big help. Next up, Grand King Grangold has a request to make of us. It seems that in his territory there are suspicious monsters at, at uh, work. Suspicious monsters doing something. Could this be connected to the Mao's declaration of war? I understood then. We'll head to Castle Grangold then. In any case, we did want to visit there again. There's the contract we need to make with Salamander, and in the west, on the western edge of the gold region, there's a Tartaros. Mephisto, you, as you have up to now, shall be accompanying Luca and his group. If anything should happen, we're, we shall contact you immediately. I understand, Your Majesty. I'll be supporting Luca's gang and fulfilling a role as contact. Okay, then next up, Castle Grangold. Let's hear the King's request. Mm -hmm. Right about now, if we had taken the Marine side, we would have another uh, notification from Tatsuko that there's more stuff to be yielded at the Marine Headquarters. Seriously, as if you could bribe me into taking the Marine side when the pirates are the good guys. In any case, thanks for watching and next time we'll be entering Grand Gold Castle and running quests.